Hey there, this is John from MySolarHome.us. I've been in the solar panel and renewable industry for the past 15 years, especially doing solar panels and storage. This video is about the six things you should consider before buying your solar panels or going solar. Six things are number one is location. Which state in the United States are you located in? Number two is about your home where you plan to put solar panels. Is that good for solar panels or not? Number three, should you consider buying a battery along with your solar panels? Number four is financial. Should you consider buying your solar panels up front, paying money up front? Number five, should you consider buying your panels by financing them, by taking a loan from the bank? And number six, should you consider a lease or a PPA? For many of you who are considering solar, it is a complicated decision. There are so many things to look at. Send an electric bill to me. Email a recent electric bill to me and I will give you a quote for your home, whether it's for financing or for cash. I have tied up with national installers across most of the states in the United States and I'm able to give you really good prices. My promise to you is I'll give you the best in equipment like the REC black and black 400 watt panels in phase microinverters, I give you the best warranty, 30 years. Most other companies will not offer you a 30 year warranty. I, and I promise to give all this at a fair price. Let's start with number one. Where are you located? Now, solar is great if you're in the states which have got a lot of sun or where you have very high electric rates. Then you pay more than 10 cents per kilowatt hour for your electricity or you're in a state with very, very good solar incentives. So the states which get a lot of sun are easy. Everything in the Southern Belt, Arizona, Nevada, California, Georgia, Florida, Texas, South Carolina, New Mexico. Second thing is, are you paying a lot for electric rates? Now, every state in the Northeast, for example, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, all these states have got humongously high rates. Hawaii and California are two which are outstandingly high rates and there are more. Some of you may not know what your rate for kilowatt hours, but if you're paying two, three hundred dollars a month for electricity, you have a very high electricity rate. The third location factor is, do you have good solar incentives? Now, if you stay in South Carolina or Connecticut or Massachusetts or California or New York, New Mexico, Arizona, New Jersey, all these states have got super solar incentives. It makes buying or financing solar such a good deal that if you're in one of these states, you should definitely think about solar. Number two, now is your home good for solar? Solar is normally available for single family homeowners or you have a town home where perhaps you don't own the roof. They may not allow panels on your roof. So single family homes are usually good. Having an electric bill of more than a hundred bucks or so is usually also another requirement. You should also look at your main electric panel. You usually need an electric panel with a main breaker of a hundred amps or more. If you open the main panel, look at the big breaker, which shuts everything off in your home. It should have a rating on top. If it says anything over, even 80 amps is good, but hundred amps is usually better. Anything more than that, you're good. The other thing is, is your roof in good shape. If you have a roof which is 20, 25 years old, you'll be better off looking at replacing your roof along with solar and it's possible to do it. Everything can be bundled together. It's pretty easy to do nowadays. And of course, does your roof get enough sun? I have other videos on my channel where I talk about this in more detail, but there is Google Sunroof is a good resource to use if your home gets sunlight or not. Even Google Maps tells you fairly decently if your home is good for solar. As long as your roof gets a lot of sun, you're in good shape. So number three, should you consider buying batteries? The other thing you should know is solar panels do not produce electricity when there is no power. If you have an outage, the solar panels don't work. It might surprise you, but yes, solar panels by law are mandated to be shut off when there is a power outage because you don't want that power coming from your panels going out to the utility and, and, and shocking somebody from the company who's working on those poles out there. If you're thinking of using solar power during an outage, you'll have to consider a battery. Batteries are a great idea because you can get power during, a, during an outage and they're becoming more and more frequent. We keep lurching from one energy crisis to another. Climate change is there in our faces. Outages are becoming more and more common. So batteries are definitely a good idea. Now, I wish I could give you better news, but batteries are really expensive. If you want to buy a decent sized battery to power your home, they're pretty much 
in the region of 10,000 plus minimum. A portable generator costs you six, 700 bucks versus a battery, which is 10,000 bucks. Most folks, they go for a portable generator, but if you could do a battery, it's a very, very good idea. Most solar systems are ready for a battery later. Today, the top selling batteries in the United States are Tesla and Enphase. I would suggest you stick to those. There is a huge delivery problem with Tesla, so Enphase is winning the battle hands down. The other batteries have got issues. You might hear a lot of hype, but really the integration of the Enphase batteries with their solar panels gives you the best bang for your buck, even if you're paying a little bit more. Number four, five, and six are to do with financing and how much you should pay for your solar. So number four is, should you pay upfront for your solar panels? Should you purchase your solar panels using cash? And the answer is yes, if you have the cash lying around, because it's a wonderful investment. In most states, the money that you invest into solar, you're gonna get it back within between five to 10 years. Now, after going solar, your electric bill goes away as in it goes down to five to 10 bucks a month. In many states, on top of your electric bill disappearing, you also get money from the state through state incentives. And number three, you get money from the federal government and in many cases from the state government, they give you back money to buy solar. So if you spend 20,000 on solar, for example, in South Carolina, they give you back $11,000 within a year. So going solar, buying upfront, paying cash is a very good option. You get the lowest price. Number five, consider buying solar with financing. There are a whole lot of banks which give you loans to buy solar. The monthly payments are very low. They've got 15, 20, 25 year loan terms. And the 25 year loan terms have ridiculously low monthly payments, something like 70, 80, 90 bucks a month, which will be much lower than your current electric bill. Plus if you get incentives on top of that from your state, you'll actually end up making money every month in a lot of states. So buying solar, using finance to buy it is great. The only thing you should look at is most of the financing deals have a big dealer fee so that they, this, your solar system will be more expensive than the cash system. So that's the only disadvantage of a finance system. And number six is finally, should you consider doing a PPA or a lease? A PPA or a lease is very good for you if you are on a fixed income. You really, and your your objective is to lower your expenses on electricity. If you're paying 150 bucks on electricity today, you could using the going solar and doing a PPA or a lease, reduce your payment from 150 to say 100 bucks, but do not have more expectations than that. Now a solar lease or a PPA is a little risky because most of the folks will try and push it down your throat. They'll tell you you have a lot of savings, but a lot of people come out unhappy because they what the, the savings that they were promised and what they actually got was a way, the, there was a huge difference. Sometimes people end up paying more after they go solar. So there are a lot of horror stories about P, the lease and the PPA. Anybody who wants to go this route has to be very, very careful. I have another video on my channel which I talk about this, but unless you know what you're doing and you're really careful, I would avoid the solar lease or the PPA with the solar finance or the solar purchase. Even if you don't get such a great deal, you'll still save a lot of money. Over a period of 25 to 30 years, you'll save between $25,000 to $75,000. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are many more on my channel. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.